Hello, this is the Truth Seeker. Uh, this is a uh, third video in uh, a continuing series on the Virgin. And I wanted to continue to discuss Chapter 7 and the Messianic aspects of Chapter 7. Um, many uh, would say that Chapter 7 has nothing to do with the Messiah. <coughs> Here's an article. Uh, written by Daniel Gruber, uh, Modern Rabbis and the Virgin Birth of the Messiah. All these links I'll put in the description. All right, he covers this topic in the very end of the article, in, uh, in which most people would say the context has nothing to do with the Messiah. Uh, in fact, uh, most modern rabbis would say that the Emmanuel of uh, chapter 7 is actually in reference to Isaiah's son in chapter 8 and his name is Mahir Shalal Hashbaz now um, basically uh, what I have to say about that is well that could be the case uh, Daniel Gruber in his article here uh, points out some very good things uh, regarding Meher Shalal Hashbaz and how he doesn't really seem to fulfill chapter 9 of um, the son who was given, you know, the government would be on his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace. Um, we don't really have a record of that and we don't really have the story of Mahal Shalal Hashbaz. Um, so, you know, it is possible that Maher Shalal Hashbaz was considered an Emmanuel, you know, was considered, you know, the Emmanuel of chapter 7, verse 14. Uh, but it is also possible that that uh, prophecy extends outward beyond uh, the time of Isaiah. And that has to do with the Jewish concept, uh, which is called Gezera Shawal. Now, I'm looking at uh, Dictionary of Biblical Criticism and Interpretation by Stanley E. Porter. And uh, he's going over this topic here on page 304, uh, which basically means literally an equivalent regulation or a parallel it's basically parallelism and um, according to this rule one passage may be explained by another if similar words or phrases are present so for example when Jesus took an action in the temple precincts he quoted phrases from Isaiah 56 7 and Jeremiah 7 11 and that is that he says is it not written that in my house shall be uh, shall be called a house of prayer for all the Gentiles but you have made it into a thug's lair. And so what has drawn these two passages together is the word house. That's where the parallelism comes into play. So it uh, appears in the quotation drawn from Isaiah 56, 7, and also appears in the part of Jeremiah 7, 11, not quoted. Jeremiah 7 qualifies the sense of Isaiah 56, so examples of Gezera Shawal are common among the rabbis because its appointed time is used of the daily sacrifice. Uh, Numbers 28.2 and of Passover, Numbers 9.2. One may infer that what applies to the one applies to the other. So that phrase, it's appointed time, is another use of parallelism. And um, so uh, basically, I'll put this link in the description, you can read it more, but what that means is that um, the, way, the way that Jewish prophecy works is that uh, it, it's not just con confined to uh, the time in which it was given, okay? 
So it may very well be that perhaps Maher Shalal Hashbaz was the Emmanuel. You know, he maybe he was given that name, Emmanuel. But the other, um, the other thing is that the ultimate Messiah uh, is going to fulfill all the characteristics of all previous messiahs, and so, in that sense, uh, he he would uh, he would also be the Emmanuel. <laughs> So, um, now going on to the next thing regarding the Messianic nature of chapter 7, we see that Rashi, who was a very prominent uh, Jewish teacher, also considered chapter 7 to be a Messianic chapter. We know this because he makes an argument regarding uh, Hezekiah not being the Messiah, and who was Hezekiah? Well, Hezekiah was the son of King Ahaz, who was the king whom Isaiah gave the prophecy to <laughs> in chapter 7. And what Rashi states uh, is that, well, Hezekiah couldn't have been the Messiah because uh, Hezekiah was basically nine years old when, when Isaiah gave the <laughs> prophecy to King Ahaz. So therefore, when, when Isaiah says, Behold, the virgin shall, in other words, future tense, conceive, or you could say, the Alma, I'm not going to get into that yet, but when, when the young woman shall conceive, so in other words, Hezekiah is already born, so he can't be the Messiah. And so the reason that Rashi was making this argument is because there were some references in the Babylonian Talmud, uh, Folio 99a, Tractate Sanhedrin. We see Rabbi Hillel said, There shall be no Messiah for Israel because they have already enjoyed him in the days of Hezekiah. And then it goes on here with some other, what other rabbis said and the ongoing argument about it. So, um, Basically, Rashi is responding to um, that claim that Hezekiah was was the ultimate Messiah. Now, I'm not going to deny Hezekiah certainly was a Messianic figure, but there's always this struggle between who is a Messianic figure and who is the the uh, the end of days. Okay, <laughs> so that's the argument going on here. And um, so uh, I'll put this article up, uh, all these links in the description. Here's another wonderful article. Um, and uh, this has got some links in here to the Sanhedrin 90, uh, 99A. Uh, this has got some stuff in here on Rashi as well, talking about uh, that verse. Um, and... Uh, the article is called Torah Answers for Anti-Missionaries. And um, so a really good article. And I think that'll wrap it up for this video. And uh, oh, um, there is another thing I was going to say about um, Mahir Shalal Hashbaz. It, it's very clear that Isaiah had at least two sons. But as you read chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, you begin to wonder if he had a third son, and maybe that third son name was Emmanuel. Uh, who knows? It's a possibility. Um, but the other thing, uh, you know, it, it's, it's odd, too, because modern-day um, uh, rabbis will tell you, oh, yeah, Mahir Shalal Hashbaz was the Emmanuel of Isaiah's prophecy. Um, but in the past, we have Rabbi Hillel saying that, oh no, it was uh, Hezekiah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, you can see how uh, there's there's some confusion and there's some ambiguity there. And, uh, and so, you know, I just wanted to point out again, you know, that, that Hebrew concept of uh, Gezerah Shawal, Shal, Shalwa, uh, basically parallelism, and um, the nature of uh, Jewish prophecy, and that 
you know, they're looking at historical figures and looking at themes in their life, you know, and those themes are, they, you know, have, they, they know that those themes are going to play themselves out in the Messiah to come, the Prince of Peace. So anyway, uh, God bless everyone. Keep seeking truth. And I look forward to my next video.